The first lady, am I auxiliar Nangagwa? The vice president, honorable general retired. Dr. C. G. N. Chwenga, Namai Chwenga. The Vice President, Honorable Colonel Retired, KCD Mohadi. The National Chairman of ZAN PF and Minister of Defense, Honorable OCZ Mchingori Kashiri. Minister of State for Provincial Affairs and Devolution, Manikal and Province, Honorable Advocate M. Mugaza. Members of ZANPF Central Committee and Politburo, the Speaker of Parliament, Honorable Advocate J. F. N. Mudenda. President of the Senate, Honorable M. M. Chinomona, the Chief Justice of the Republic of Zimbabwe, Honorable Justice Luke Malava, leaders of other political parties who are here, I greet you. The Chief Secretary to the President and the Cabinet, Dr. Martin Rushwaya, Chairman of the Public Service Commission, Dr. Vincent Ungwe, Commander Zimbabwe Defense Forces, General P. V. Swanda, Mambo Nyashan Mwera. Na bose mazimambo awuya kuzoti kuta pano ndilo kwa zisai. Your Excellencies, members of the diplomatic call, I'm informed there's a delegation from Mozambique led by the governor of Manikaland province, Monte Obrigar. Senior government officials, service chiefs, veterans of the liberation struggle, ladies and gentlemen, comrades and friends, my fellow countrymen and the fellow women, ah, oh, not fellow women, <laughs> fellow countrymen and the women. Today, we mark another milestone in the history of our great nation of Zimbabwe as we celebrate our fourth independence anniversary. On this day, the sacred national flag of our beloved motherland Zimbabwe was raised and the Union Jack brought down, symbolizing the end to the racist and the brutal colonial rule of this country. We are setting our independence, freedom, and sovereignty as the rightful owners and the rulers of this great land. Never, never. Never again shall we be ruled by foreign people in whatever pretext. I say to all fellow citizens here present and in the diaspora,
Congratulations, my Korokoto and Flope. We gather in this scenic province of Manigaland with its cascading mountains and valleys, which was the ground of many battles fought during the protracted war of liberation. We respectively salute the heroes of our armed struggle. We honor the liberation icons of this province, such as the late national heroes, Comrade Ndamaning Stole, Comrade Herbert Wunshe Chitepo, Comrade Mambo Chief Rekai Tangwena, Two Boy Edgar Teker, William Dangana, Comrade Kumbirai Kangan Kangai, and Menanas, alongside the main known and unknown sons and daughters of the soil from across our loved country, Zimbabwe. They all fought, suffered, and sacrificed their lives to win this independence and freedom for us. We shall forever remain grateful. We shall never forget. Nasi Tirikuno Kumakomo, Ubera District, Manikaran Province. This follows the decision by the Second Republic to rotate the National Independence Day celebrations and the commemorations. Our gathering here must therefore serve as a reminder that despite our differences in language, culture and traditions, despite of where we live in the four corners of Zimbabwe, we are one people, one unitary and a united nation with one rich and illustrious history. Tirinika imwe chete, tirivanu vamwe chete. Singabantu vanye, silizwe linye. We Zimbabweans shall remain united, living in peace and harmony, developing our mother country, emboldened by our philosophy, and that is Nika Igo Tamba Igo Namatirwa. Hallelujah. The burden and responsibility to build, govern, and pray for our country lies with us. This is a duty we are carrying forward, brick upon brick, stone upon stone, and step by step. My fellow Zimbabweans, Manikal and province will always be remembered as one of the many provinces in the country that bore the brunt of the armed liberation struggle, which ushered us into the independence and freedom which we all enjoy today. The proximity of the province to Mozambique so many communities suffering from the indiscriminate, racist brutality of the colonial regime. In one accord, today, our nation says, thank you, thank you, the people of Manikalan province. Thank you for playing your part. 
for our country's independence. Tino kutenda i manikaland. Sialiwo nga manikaland. The historic and landmark Zapasi Foxtrot Assembly Point, which was a temporary home to close to 15,000 comrades during the ceasefire period, is located about 40 kilometers from this venue. Some of them are in our midst today. Such sites together with the recently unveiled monuments at Pupu in Matevelen, North Province, and Kamungoma in Masingo Province, and the main others yet to be unveiled, remind us of the sacrifices made by heroes and the veterans of the armed liberation struggle for us to enjoy this independence and freedom today. Let us continue to honor them by memorializing our historic sites and correctly documenting our rich liberation war history for both present and future generations. My dear comrades and friends, this year's commemorations come on the backdrop of the climate change induced El Nino drought. It is the worst drought in 40 years, which is affecting the entire Sadiq region. I'm aware that many of our communities, including here in Manikaland, have been affected by the low rainfall, which has resulted in poor harvest. As such, earlier this month, I invoked a nationwide state of disaster on the drought to allow our government machinery and institutions to give special attention to mitigating the negative impact of the drought. The Second Republic under ZAN PF is a people-centered government committed to wholeheartedly attending to the needs of our communities across the board. In both rural or urban areas, no Zimbabwean will succumb to starvation. Adequate resources are being mobilized towards national food security for our people. The Food Deficit Mitigation Program is gathering pace following the identification of vulnerable communities and the households in every district and the world. Drawing from our traditional heritage, cultural norms and values, we are tackling drought in unity. No one and no place would be left behind. Meanwhile, my government is implementing a robust winter cropping program as we prioritize broadening our strategic grain reserves. Furthermore, my government is putting in place measures to ensure that winter maize projects in Chirezi, Mzarabani and Binga are reactivated. My fellow countrymen Zimbabweans, government is alive to the adverse impact suffered by our people as a result of currency volatility and inflation. Last week, my administration launched a new structured gold-backed currency, the Zimbabwe Gold Zig. 
our zig currency is encumbered by our gold, gold given gold and other strategic mineral resources as well as foreign currency reserves. This development will boost our confidence and pride in our own national currency and further help protect our currency from attack by the country's detractors. This is our currency. We all have a duty and burden to support this bold and transformational development. Further, measures to encourage savings and reduction of excessive bank fees and the judges have also been put in place. Nika yetu ili kuendelea mbele ili zile tulia pambili. The overall economic outlook remains bright. Our country's GDP is now exceeding 47 billion US dollars up from 16 billion US dollars in 2018. This shows that we, the descendants of the great Munumtapa, are a resilient, focused, determined and hard working people. Zimbabwe is winning and Zimbabwe is marching on. In spite of the ongoing illegal sanctions and the various other shocks such as COVID-19 pandemic and other attacks by our detractors, we continue to foster investment-led economic recovery. We are modernizing and industrializing the economy and delivering sustainable development for all the peoples of our great motherland, Zimbabwe. A positive growth as a result of investments from both domestic and foreign players as well as incentives and the policies is evident in the mining sector. In the wake of recent discoveries, Zimbabwe is on course to be a player in the oil, gas, and the petroleum chemical industry. The country's lithium mining and processing portfolio is growing, including here in Boera district. This will see Zimbabwe sustainably exploiting this strategic new energy resource for the social economic development of our people. We are also contributing to addressing the global climate change crisis. Capacity utilization levels are constantly increasing in the manufacturing sector. New industries are being opened with more of our young entrepreneurs confidently now producing goods and services for our country and our communities. Exports of value-added products increased by 22% from US 366.5 million, 366 million in 2022 to a commendable 448.7 million US dollars in 2023. A 34% increase in tourism sector arrivals in 2023 figures has seen the sector exceed the pre-COVID-19 tourist arrivals. The growth of the sector has been further boosted by increased domestic tourism 
as more of our people enjoy independence by visiting different parts of the country. I commend Zimbabweans for this culture and the pride in our local destinations and country as a whole. The Second Republic continues to streamline border procedures and modernizing infrastructure towards facilitating cross-border movement and enhancing regional integration within Sadiq, the continent and beyond. Signature infrastructure projects involving key economic enablers in power generation, dam construction, road networks, water and sanitation as well as ICTs continue to improve service delivery, creating jobs and transforming our socio-economic landscape. As we modernize our great motherland, Zimbabwe, robust strategies to strengthen our country's energy mix remain ongoing. Works on the fuel pipeline will soon facilitate an increase in annual pumping volumes from the current 2 billion to 3 billion liters in response to growing fuel demands by our economy. Following the successful completion of the Baird Bridge Harare Highway, focus has now shifted to the Harare Chirundi section. The broader road rehabilitation construction projects across our country's provinces will continue to be supported. The Second Republic committed, is committed to ensuring that Zimbabwe becomes a robust digital economy and knowledge-based society. This has seen the expansion of the fiber optic network backbone infrastructure and the adoption of responsive policies and measures to promote access and the use of ICTs. Industry players are called upon to operate within our country's laws. They are also aimed to ensure that ICT services and products are affordable to all our communities, including the education, trade, and other economic sectors. Over the past year, the broadcasting industry has undergone tremendous transformation towards inclusive access to information. Radio signal coverage has been expanded and the number of community radio stations has increased. Let us continue to encourage the use of our local languages to preserve our diverse and unique traditions and culture. Social media platforms must be used responsibly to defend our independence and national pride, as well as to educate, maintain unity, harmony, and drive production and productivity in all our communities. My fellow countrymen, Zimbabweans, the Second Republic is unrelenting in its efforts to bring quality health care closer to every citizen. The availability of life-saving drugs and the specialist medical health care is tremendously improved. More health facilities will be commissioned before year end throughout the country. In this age of speedy technological advancements, we must continue to acquire the requisite knowledge and skills and innovate the rollout of science, technology, and innovation as a driver to our national modernization and industrialization agenda 
under the heritage based education 5.0 model is yielding notable results adding to these successes realized under this policy trust a deliberate policy is underway to guarantee a seamless science technology and innovation ecosystem which cuts across primary, secondary, and higher education levels. The training of teachers on digital skills as part of the broader focus on reskilling and upskilling is being accelerated. We are resolute in the course towards our primary and secondary school learners throughout the country acquiring technology and ICT driven literacy by 2030. The revamped integrated skills outreach expansion program is targeting youth empowerment in the trades encompassing building, carpentry, plumbing and electrical installations. This new thrust is modeled to accelerate modernization, industrialization, and improve the quality of living environments, particularly for our rural communities. In the spirit of leaving no one and no place behind, government has established the Plum Tree Polytechnic and the Binga Industrial Training Colleges. Emphasis is being placed on specialist technical and, and entrepreneurship skills that link directly with industrial and the social development to enhance employability and labor productivity. My fellow Zimbabweans, independence opened an array of opportunities for our young people to showcase their talent in sport, recreation, arts and culture. It is therefore commendable that Zimbabweans are participating with a distinction in various regional, continental and international events which essentially enhances our national brand. Through the implementation of the community sport and recreation club system, we are increasing support to sport and recreation across all ages. My administration recognizes that a healthy nation is a productive nation. I commend private sector players for complementing our initiatives by providing state-of-the-art sporting facilities and sponsorships for various national teams and sporting disciplines. The sports, arts and recreation sector is also helping in the fight against the scourge of drug and substance abuse. I appeal to families, to churches, communities and institutions to play their part in the fight against the drug and the substance abuse. Usare gabana komane vanaska na vachisuta zvokora. Brambizai karam karova totaradi. We all have a duty to protect our freedom, independence, and sovereignty by deliberately protecting the young people of our great country. The long-awaited reintroduction of the youth service in Zimbabwe program will see our nation mold youth who are proactive, patriotic, and productive citizens of our motherland. My dear fellow Zimbabweans, government continues to avail resources to promote women and community empowerment 
by funding small and medium enterprises may not be facilitated to grow, professionalize, and modernize their businesses, as well as to access both local and international markets. The safety and security of our women and children is integral to the overall well-being of our society. All forms of violence against women, against the children, are not acceptable in our nation. Under the New Marriages Act, those found guilty of arranging child marriages and their pledging children for marriage now face deterrent punishment. Let us protect our children from retrogressive traditions and practices. My administration continues to implement policies in line with our constitutional ob obligations to respect and honor our veterans of the liberation struggle. I urge us to draw lessons from this rich legacy of bravery and a look into the future with hope and confidence in our own abilities as an independent and free people. My fellow countrymen and women, the professionalization of our public service is yielding positive results with regards to the quality of service delivery. Performance cont contracting has been entrenched with government ministers, permanent secretaries, chief executives of state-owned enterprises, and local authorities now bound to deliver quality services for our people. Conformity with the sound corporate governance remains a priority to safeguard precious state resources for the development of our country. The welfare of our civil servants will continue to be reviewed in line with economic sustainability. The call to action initiative, which I launched last year, compels all local authorities to refocus towards a people-centered development trust and quality service delivery. Non-performance from our local authorities is not acceptable. Our people deserve to enjoy a higher quality of life incurred from the grassroots levels upwards. My fellow countrymen and women, our country's foreign policy remains dynamic. Zimbabwe is a friend to all and an enemy of none. We are bolstered by our historic bonds of friendship as well as new partnerships and investments from across the world. Flourishing relationships are being forged based on mutual respect, shared values, and the win-win benefits. In 2023, new diplomatic missions were established in line with our engagement and re-engagement agenda. Those nations willing to assist and partner us in our ongoing development journey are most welcome. Zimbabwe will, however, never compromise on our hard-won independence, our sovereignty, and national pride, as well as rich cultural norms and the values of our people. Our great motherland, Zimbabwe, shall forever be a sweet home for all our citizens, young and old, as well as those in the diaspora. The enthusiastic support by our diaspora community to reinvest back in our country is commendable. 
Let us continue to build our country together. Peace and unity remain a cornerstone for sustainable development. I commend all the communities of our great nation for the prevailing peace and harmony and a stable security situation throughout the country. In this enduring spirit, Zimbabwe is playing its part towards the realization of peace and security in the Sadiq region, Africa and beyond. August this year, we'll see our country, Zimbabwe, assume the chairmanship of Sadiq. With humility, our country will continue to promote the vision and ethos of the founding fathers of Sadiq towards consolidating regional unity, regional peace, regional stability, and a propelling economic integration. My fellow Zimbabweans, the freedom we enjoy today is priceless and irreversible. On this special day, let us once again make a pledge and promise to stand firm and resolute in defense of our rich liberation heritage and the values that saw us attain freedom, territorial integrity, sovereignty, and independence as we march forward to prosperity and a higher quality of life by 2030. Zimbabwe shall forever remain a democratic and constitutional nation. We fought for this democracy. We are a united and a peace-loving country. This was reflected in the conduct of our 2023 harmonized general elections, which put the shame, which put to shame detractors. Well done, well done, Zimbabwe. We, the people of this great nation, always remain victorious. We are masters of our own destiny. A united and resilient people, the descendants of the great Murumtapa, we shall continue marching forward as one people. From Plum Tree to Mutare, from Zambezi to Limpopo, we are building our country and improving our quality of life. Together in unity, let us continue to love our country, value this freedom, and wholeheartedly preserve this independence. Come rain, come sunshine, we shall continue marching forward. Guided by the rotational basis of our national independence celebrations, the Midlands province will host next year's 45th independence celebrations. Finally, thank you, thank you, thank you, Manika and the province for turning out in your numbers to celebrate this sacred day in our country's calendar. Thank you for opening your hearts and your homes as you did this, during the liberation struggle to welcome the whole of Zimbabwe to your doorsteps during the armed struggle. With these remarks, it is now my singular honor and pleasure to wish all Zimbabweans a happy 4th Independence Day celebrations. Long live our unity, our peace, our freedom. Long live our independence. Makorokoto, I'm shopper. Congratulations. God bless you all. God bless Zimbabwe. I thank you.